Hey guys, today's video is all about Retrieval Augmented Generation Rack. Uh, we will see what is Rack, the importance of Rack. And at the end of this video, we will also see a simple practical tutorial on Rack. So let's get started. We all know that uh, LLMs have created a huge buzz these days and all thanks to the improvement and advancements in artificial intelligence and machine learning because of which uh, every company today wants to build their own LLM powered applications and autonomous AI agents, right? And um, we have companies like Meta, OpenAI, Mistral, Microsoft, etc. Uh, releasing their new models uh, with new capabilities on a regular basis. Um, everything is good, but uh, we need to understand one thing uh, that these LLMs, large language models, sometimes hallucinate. What do you mean? Yes. These large language models uh, sometimes produce answers that are not correct. I mean, incorrect answers. So sometimes they produce um, responses, answers that are biased and uh, sometimes also kind of made up answers. Uh, and there are many reasons for this uh, hallucination behavior, hallucinating behavior of uh, large language models, uh, one of which um, you know, the quality of data uh, that uh, these LLMs are trained on and the cutoff date uh, is also important. Uh, so as you can see below, uh, I was just uh, chatting with the new um, GPT-40 uh, model, right? And um, I asked it like, how many yes letters are there in the word amazing? So it said like, there is one yes uh, in the word amazing. I asked like, are you sure? So it said like, hey, I apologize for the mistake. There is no S letter uh, in the word amazing. As you can see, this is one of the prominent new models from GPT OpenAI, uh, which is uh, GPT-40 uh, that started uh, hallucinating. It gave me an hallucinated answer, right? So this is one of the examples. And one, one more classic example is this, right? Bard, uh, Gemini, uh, which uh, Bard, I mean, uh, which is now called Gemini, which uh, falsely stated um, something regarding the James Webb Space uh, Telescope uh, when a user asked it about asked about uh, James Webb Web Space Telescope. So as you can see, the, here is uh, the screenshot a tweet by Google itself. Um, uh, it said like Bard is an experimental con conversational AI service powered by Lambda. So. Uh, so we need to understand that these um, these large language models uh, sometimes uh, hallucinate okay and uh, it is very important for uh, for uh, for us to mitigate these uh, uh, mitigate these uh, hallucination behavior of uh, uh, large language models and uh, with the same context uh, we have uh, we have many strategies to mitigate these uh, llm uh, large language model hallucinations so there are basically three strategies to mitigate LLM hallucinations of which one we are talking in depth today that is a RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. And the second one is fine tuning and the third one is prompt engineering. In RAG, the AI system is augmented with uh, some custom data for uh, easy retrieval, right? Uh, so what happens, this custom data, the, this, this knowledge base uh, is stored in a vector database, basically, so that um, so that when a user uh, query comes in, uh, the user query gets converted into a vector embedding and um, it goes through the vector database uh, to find the relevant chunk. And that's how basically RAG works. Um, and uh, second one is fine tuning where um, it is all about training a pre-trained model with custom data. You know, uh, we should know that um, all these uh, base models are already trained on uh, massive data set. Uh, but uh, if we want them uh, to use uh, for our use case, we need to we need to train them with our custom data so that they understand uh, the concepts, they understand uh, the vocabulary, right? And uh, that's about fine tuning. And prompt engineering is all about the art and science of uh, talking to large language models. Uh, you basically you know, work with your prompts. Okay, so um, let's talk in depth about uh, uh, retrieval augmented generation. 
So we basically saw three strategies to mitigate these LLM hallucinations. Uh, one is fine tuning. Second one is uh, prompt engineering. And the third one that we are talking today, that is retrieval augmented generation. So among all these uh, strategies, uh, a RAG is considered one of the sophisticated ones. And um, uh, so let's let's talk in depth about a RAG um, and uh, let's see a simple workflow of uh, retrieval augmented generation. So as you can see in the image left hand side, the documents, we are taking example of PDF files. Uh, so these basically uh, get extracted and split into small chunks of words and each chunk is assigned with a numerical value and that's how vector embeddings are created. But to create these vector embeddings, we need embedding models. And we have different platforms like OpenAI, Cohere, Hugging Face that provide us with uh, embedding models, right? So using these embedding models, we can create uh, vector embeddings. And all these vector embeddings are stored in a vector store or vector database, you can call. So this is about the storage part. So what happens when a user query comes in? So as you can see in the image, right, the, when a user query comes in, even that gets converted into uh, a vector embedding, right? And uh, that goes through the vector vector store or vector database to retrieve uh, the, uh, the similar chunk, right? Uh, using sim similarity search or vector search. And now that uh, you have retrieved uh, the related um, or similar chunk, uh, you have the prompt ready uh, with user query and other relevant chunk. And that goes through, again, an, um, a large language model with all the context. And uh, that's how the user gets uh, the answer or the response back. So this is a whole RAG setup. And uh, in the next part of this video, let's see a simple tutorial on RAG. Hey guys, so in this tutorial, I'm using single store as my vector database. And I'm also using uh, single stores uh, notebooks feature to, um, to run all my code, the notebook code. Okay, so first things first, go to singlestore.com, uh, sign up for free and they have, single store has free shared tier, which you can use for free. You can create uh, databases, you can uh, load your data, you can do a lot of uh, data exploration, data analytics and um, yeah, single store um, is used by many companies for real time analytics. So it's a complete data platform. Uh, so let's get started with our tutorial. So once you sign up, uh, you will land here, uh, you will have your workspace ready. Uh, by default, you can create a new workspace or right, or you can start with uh, your default, uh, default workspace. Uh, creating a database under your workspace is very easy. It's just like create a database. I have already created my database. And uh, once you have the workspace ready and your database ready, uh, you can go to uh, here, as you can see in the left side data studio, go to uh, new notebook, right? Give it a name, go to new notebook and you will land here, right? So I'll share, I'll share the whole uh, notebook code. Um, uh, I have created a repo, um, a GitHub repo. I'll share the link in the description. You can go through and uh, see the power of uh, RAG, right? So uh, let's get started. Uh, first things first, when once you land here on creating your no, new notebook, uh, it is just like your Google Collab or Jupyter Notebook. So uh, install the libraries and dependencies. So basically I'm using uh, Langchain framework. If you don't know what is Langchain, it's an open source AI framework for building LLM applications. Uh, so don't worry about it much, uh, but I have also created um, a video on Langchain. You can go back uh, to the video and check it out. All right, I'll also mention that video link in the description. So first things first, install the libraries and dependencies. I am installing Langchain, single store, DB, tick token, right? And then import the libraries. I'm importing some libraries again from Langchain because I'm using Langchain as my AI yeah, framework. And next thing is load our custom document. So I have got some custom document. It's about some yeah, National Health Profile 2022. So I'm using that. Uh, I'm basically loading it. And then uh, next what to do is split the document into chunks, right? Using Langchain. And uh, you can do that. Basically, um, we are extracting the 
the content from there right and uh, seeing that you have one document in your data uh, there are uh, okay nine lakh odd characters in your document and we have 493 pages right and next is uh, use open ai to generate embeddings for the document chunks right we generate uh, embeddings for our chunks uh, document chunks so next is let's store our uh, document embeddings in single store database so we have created a database um, we have created a workspace and we have created a data database under single store right so you need to select that here let's select uh, my this is my workspace and uh, for example my db is my database so after that you can start running this uh, so okay it's not selected let's select this so my db got selected that is my database and the table name is pav doc so that is where we are storing under this database we have created a we are creating a table name and that is where we are storing all the embeddings right of our data and then uh, let's uh, let us check the text chunks and associated embed uh, associated embeddings stored inside our database so let's see um, what is getting stored so this is a sample uh, data that is getting stored so let's ask a query against our custom data right that the pdf that we loaded right uh, using just a similarity search uh, to retrieve the top k closest content so now that our content is stored in a vector database uh, we have converted our data we have extracted um, we have chunked our data and uh, created embeddings and stored our data in a database in our vector database let's ask a query to retrieve the uh, to retrieve the top k closest content using similarity search right so i'm asking a query what is the amount uh, covered per family in ayushman bharat so basically um, the pdf like i said it's all about national health profile right uh, so i'm asking this query and uh, the you can see the response it's it's a big response it's it's not very clear right so it's not very clear but now let's use here is the augmented response to the user query once we augment then you can see the response from the uh, user query for the user query you can see a clear response here right the ayushman bharat um, pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana provides a health cover of up to uh, rupees 5 lakh per family per year something like that so the exact chunk uh, we retrieve the exact chunk um, using proper rag right so this is how basically uh, the uh, rag framework works and uh, you can see in our database uh, the uh, data are getting stored uh, stored as vector embeddings let's go to our um, database to see that right so let's go to my db and we saw that right this is our table pow doc pow doc sample sample data see as you can see the content uh, is all uh, stored in a in the form of vector embeddings uh, right so this is about uh, simple uh, rag tutorial let me know if you have any questions i'm going to share uh, the link uh, of um, these repos so that you can try how rag works uh, right and if you have any questions let me know in the comments thanks